Calculate the maximum possible voltage gain for a common emitter amplifier when biased by an ideal current source in which RC is infinite, RS is zero, and RL is also infinite. State appropriate assumptions. So basically what this is saying is that I provided a common emitter amplifier, you know, your run of the mill one that you usually see up in the top right corner here. We see that RC is infinite. So technically this resistor is going to be open because no current can be going through it. So that is a basic property of an ideal current source. So IC will flow down into the collector without any voltage. And RS is zero, meaning that the source resistance is zero, while RL is infinite, meaning that there is no resistor attached to the load in which V out would be the potential across such a resistor. So let's draw the equivalent of this scenario. Here we have our V sig, the signal that will be perturbed and amplified. We short that to ground. And instead of adding a source resistor, we directly short it into the base as per the question specifications. Now for the amplifier, since it's common emitter still, ground that. We have our little base here, emitter. And for our collector, it states that the RC is zero. So as I just said, you know, you can put a little dot in here, meaning that this will be IC. And this will be our collector. And down the line, instead of adding a resistor like that, and you'd put the voltage load across it, we just open it since it's infinite. So if it's infinite, then that means V out is simply just the potential right there relative to ground. Now that we have a more similar circuit to this situation, let's draw the small signal analysis. I know it's not very fun, but you gotta do it to analyze it. Starting with VS, we have that here. Now we'll just put a placeholder for RS just for the formula calculation purposes, which should be attached in series with R in, or I would like to call it R pi, which is the internal resistance of the BJT at that point. So I'll put plus minus VBE, which will be the potential going across it. We have our source resistor, and we know that current IB is going through it. Now, uh, we know that there will, of course, as always, be a dependent current source. Put that to ground, pointing downwards. This term is known as, as always, GM VBE. Or you can also call it beta IB, if you want, if you're more familiar with that. Continuing on, we have RO, which is another internal resistance that is found near the collector. And We'll, for the sake of you know this hypothetical problem, we will attach an RC to it in parallel, as well as the load resistor, RL, even though we know, of course, that doesn't exist. And the potential voltage drop, V out, will be here. So now that we have all that settled, let's derive the formula. So we got V out over V sig. We know that this will be the overall voltage gain. Usually it's V out over V in, but we also have to consider RS, but as it turns out, RS doesn't exist. So this will equal negative GM, RO in parallel with RC, times the voltage division between R pi and RS. If you want to see how I derived the original voltage amplification, you can check that in my previous video, which I just tagged above. And the only thing we added now is that it's in parallel with RC. So if it's in parallel with RC and we're given that RC is infinite, RO in reality is actually in parallel with infinity. And as it turns out, you will neglect the infinity after a basic mathematical operation. So now we know that it's actually negative GM RO times R pi over R pi plus R s. Again, as I said, we're taking the actual voltage across R pi VBE. So if we need this voltage here, we're going to have to do voltage division relative to R s. And we know that this is actually the voltage being amplified. Moving on, we are given that R s equals zero. So if R s equals zero, then it's just R pi over R pi. So V out over V sig equals negative GM 
r o. I'll write it up here because we're multiplying it simply by r pi over r pi, which equals one. Now that we know it's negative g m r o, we're pretty much back to the original formula of a common emitter amplifier. However, uh, let's try to express this in a different way. We know that g m equals i c over v t. It's a basic property you should know in this class. The collector current over the thermal voltage, 26 millivolts. And we also know that R O from up here equals early voltage V A over the same collector current I C, another property. Knowing all of this, we can finally rearrange V out over V sig equals substituting that negative I C over V T, which is G M originally, times R O, which is V A over IC. As you can see, IC nicely cancels out to equal negative VA over VT, which is the negative early voltage over thermal voltage. If you're asking me why did we decide to rearrange it from negative GMRO, it's because the book told me to. <laughs> I honestly can't really think of any other reason why I'd have to do this. But it's good to know that you can actually express the same formula in different parameters. So, you know, you can get behind a little bit of that. So if you have any other questions, please leave in the comments below and good luck.